Tasks are rarely done independent of each other in a project. So it's very important to build in dependencies and constraints between your tasks in order to get a really good idea of where your project plan is headed. I've opened up the Web Planner Master exercise file in order to get an idea of where we're heading when we are creating our project plan. This is going to be our end spot here. But I want to identify for you just visually what kinds of things we're going to be creating when we're talking about creating relationships between tasks. There are two things to consider when creating a project schedule. What constraints you have between your tasks and what dependencies you have between your tasks. Now, a constraint affects the timing of the task in relation to either a specific date or the start or end date of your project. And those are identified by the icons in your icon column here. When you see this kind of a graphic in that column, you're identifying that there is a particular constraint within that specific task. Also, you have dependencies that affect the timing of the tasks, and they are in relation to other tasks in the project. You can't begin to develop the functional site specifications before you define the project scope. So that's why you see a line linking this phase of the project to phase number two of the project. So anytime you see lines within your Gantt chart, you are identifying a dependency of between phases or tasks themselves. The larger black lines here identify a linkage or a dependency between the two different phases, whereas the smaller blue lines show a dependency between the different steps within that phase. You set dependencies to specify the order in which your tasks must occur in a project. You can also identify them here by identifying what the predecessor task is or what task must come before another task. And in this case, if we take a look at row number three, the defining the purpose or the mission statement of this particular project, I've identified that it needs to happen after I identify my target audience. As well, in the next phase, establishing the project deadlines needs to happen after I define the purpose. So I've identified my predecessor tasks here. You can also identify successor tasks, which are the task that needs to occur after the relationship, if that's more appropriate. Any task can have multiple predecessors or successors. Here, you have seen an example of that down in row 29. So if we scroll down the screen and see row 29, we have two dependencies here for this particular task. Both need to be completed before we can begin to release the domain name. We're going to understand the types of dependencies in a little bit more detail in our next movie. So let's take a look at what we can do there.